How's it going, everybody? You know the deal. We watched a Nicolas Cage movie um, just a few moments ago, and we are going to review it with our intense, massive movie knowledge of watching a bunch of random shit. <laughs> yep, we're the podcrastinators. We're the podcrastinators. I'm Connor. I'm Cam. And yeah, we just finished Wild at Heart. There was something uh, interesting because in, in the age of streaming, and everything. The only way we were able to watch this was because you have a impressive Blu-ray collection and this was part of your collection. I do. So this movie has been on my list to watch for a while because I am a pretty big David Lynch fan. And um, I was just collecting some David Lynch movies and I just had had it in my collection, never watched it. And then when we were deciding on what movies to watch for this season, I was like, oh, there's that Nicolas Cage movie that David Lynch directed. Uh, that would be a good one to watch. I've always wanted to watch it. And then when we went to uh, sit down and finally view it to review, it wasn't on streaming anywhere because, you know, that's how we've been watching them just because it's easier. It's convenient. It's not available anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, it's, it's a big barrier for, to not have it on streaming nowadays, right? Cause I like, know. <laughs> Unlike you and I who like have like that like collector's gene, you know, where we like mm -hmm. to hold the physical copy of things. And right. plus like we've talked about this before, DVDs have cut content, director's commentary. Yeah, there's a bunch of special features and stuff. Mm -hmm. And here's one thing. So last year when me and my roommates moved into our new apartment, we didn't have a uh, Wi-Fi set up yet. And the only way that we had to watch something was, oh, good thing I have my library of 800 <laughs> movies. Don't worry, we'll have something to watch. Yeah, you'd be the best person to be in like a fucking <laughs> Wi-Fi down for whatever to be with. So, and, and when your Wi-Fi's bad, you don't get the like, your quality doesn't falter. You're always True. gonna be watching it at HD. So You're not wrong. I'm, I'm a big proponent of physical media. I am, I am too. <laughs> and it came I in clutch you know. now. It came in very clutch. Um, and like you said, this was a David Lynch film and you are a huge fan. Um, could you explain a little bit your like why you like David Lynch? Like what about his like directorial style? Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so what really got me into David Lynch, and I still think it's my favorite David Lynch project, is Twin Peaks. It's um the TV show, if you've ever mm -hmm. Uh, heard of it highly recommend watching it but he has other movies like um we watched blue velvet in our lost season and in the season we recorded the very first like prototype yeah the podcast, prototype maybe we'll release it someday in the future mm -hmm. but um he also has maholland drive which is really good and eraserhead is his first one but my favorite thing about david lynch films is like they all feel very like dreamlike and they're very surreal and all the characters are just like a little bit over the top and like mm -hmm. quirky i don't know i just love the characters and just the like the the feeling of david lynch projects i think from this movie and blue velvet which we watched together um and those are my only two like exposure to david lynch i think one thing that i catch on is that like it's very edgy it pushes boundaries even i feel like for yeah. today's standards which I is kind of crazy like thinking about it well that one came out in the 90s i don't know when his oldest projects were like the 80s and the eraserhead his very first movie came out in 77 okay um i think this came out in 1990 yeah i believe and then twin peaks also came out in the 90s maholland drive i think was early 2000s mm -hmm. but yeah um i actually have a book by david lynch if you're if anyone is ever curious about like the the creative process that david lynch goes into the book is called catching the big fish and he talks about how like meditation is a big part of his like creative process and him coming up with ideas as he like spends a lot of time meditating hmm. and that's how he like comes up with a lot of his that's ideas interesting. Mm -hmm. meditating huh Apparently to meditate. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's what, what you, I was When's thinking. the last time you've meditated? I feel like maybe in theology class way back in high school. Or, I don't know, I feel like on th the 
the swim team, we did a lot of yoga, and I feel like that's a time that that's I... a form of meditation, meditation yeah. I guess. Yeah, that's true. Focus on your breathing. Yeah. God, I hate yoga. What? <laughs> Come on, yoga feels it's so good. It's not active enough for me. I love yoga. <laughs> Yoga's so... Like, it's just... I like the relaxing part of it. I wish working out was like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. But it's like, all right, now we're going to lay on our backs and take Shavasana. a 10-minute nap. And they're like, oh, I love the nap part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I like this movie. Mm -hmm. It was a little, I think it lost me at times because it was a little bit long. I agree. The pacing but, was a little slow at yeah. times. I think once Willem Dafoe came into the picture, I was a lot more hooked. Uh-huh. I, I would say when they, when Nick Cage and Laura Dern went to New Orleans, I was like into it. And then when they left and... Mm, I don't know. I just really, actually, I will say, I didn't really like understand the point in New Orleans where like, yeah. wh why did the the mom have her lover guy killed? Like that part didn't really. And also he makes sense. They didn't to really me. kill. Um, what's his name? Riley or Saul? Whatever. I don't know. What was the guy? Nicholas Cage's name? Oh, Sailor. Sailor. Yeah. Um, like I thought. I thought like the whole thing of her reaching out. I mean, I guess Willem Dafoe was part of it, but it, I don't know. It just didn't really feel connected enough for me. The mom's like... Well, because cause she and the DeSantos guy went to the other guy that placed the contract on that like gave out the two silver dollars. So the mm -hmm. one silver dollar went to the lady in New Orleans who killed the mom's lover. And then the other silver dollar went to Willem Dafoe. And Willem oh, Dafoe's I whole see. plan I was see. to like kill Nicolas Cage during the robbery. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, the silver dollar part didn't click with me. Okay, that, that does make a little bit more sense. Willem Dafoe was a gross man. I know, his teeth were his really teeth gross. Were nasty. Yeah. Like, the gums were so I was, low. I was, I was gonna say, I, I will say, I I don't think Nicolas Cage is a bad actor. I know I probably said that every single thing. He, he's definitely over the top, but this movie I was watching, I was like, you know, I wish he played more roles like this. Because mm -hmm. like I feel like he fits really well into a role like this. I agree. Where they were, like, I, like I feel he's like definitely, he... he's definitely off. You know, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, like some actors, you, you don't want all actors to be so vanilla. You know. I agree. I agree. I feel like he's perfect for like a David Lynch role, where yeah. like all the characters are just kind of quirky and weird and kind of surreal. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I love about David Lynch is like, if you watch a lot of his stuff, there's a lot of actors that he brings back. Like he has a lot of people that he like just brings in for cameo roles. Like mm -hmm. um, in Twin Peaks, if you've seen that, do you know what Twin Peaks is about? I know it's like somewhat supernatural. It's kind of like, a, well, it starts out, it's like a murder mystery. It's like this small mountain town and someone killed the like high school sweetheart. It's not, it's not about the restaurant where big titted girls bring you wings. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> that, that's the wrong Twin Peaks. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's like who killed Laura Palmer, basically. Yeah. And the girl that plays Laura Palmer was the good witch in mm -hmm. this. So and then there's several, several other cameos like the girl that was in the car crash that died she was she's in twin peaks mm -hmm. the one guy talking about his dog is in twin peaks that's another thing that i really like about david lynch stuff is just like when you like oh I, he, he, yeah <laughs> there's, there's yeah. the the actor that i know from his other projects i really like, like personally i really like when directors do that because like when the, they have the relationship i mean it's like it's like anything right like when you're more on the same wavelength with someone you can just kind of speak to them and like you kind of push off of it. like like if i didn't if we didn't know each other so well i don't think we'd be good with the podcast or yeah, our gameplays uh -huh. or anything but what, i'm trying to think of other directors like i feel kevin, like kevin smith quentin tarantino i was gonna say tarantino who's the guy who directed like forgetting sarah marshall and get him to the greek and like all those super early 2000s movies i can't think of it i'll have to look it, i'll look it up really quick but mentioning another uh frequent david lynch collaborator is laura dern remember she was in uh blue velvet mm -hmm. and she is in the the new season of twin peaks the we should new do season yeah so a little like recently new like uh i think it came out within the last four years nicholas stoller i don't know oh, that might is that the guy for hold on Yes. Yeah, so oh, he produced the Muppets and directed Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, 
Well, for getting Sarah Marshall and get him to the Greek are kind of like actually I don't, they're I, set in the same universe, right? Yeah. There's also those um, are good movies. There's also this new movie coming out called Bros, which is done by him. Oh, okay. I've seen some trailers yeah, for that. It looks I, interesting. I, I do kind of want to see it because I really like all those movies. I'd be down. Yeah. I don't know if that's actually the director, if it's something else. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. That's not the focus of today's podcast. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> uh, I was going to say we should definitely watch Twin Peaks. I'd oh, be down. You were asking about the Twin Peaks being new. So in the... <laughs> we haven't really talked about Wild Heart that much yet, but in Twin er, when Twin Peaks was coming out in the 90s. Um, the ratings kind of fell off a little bit towards the end, so it got canceled. And mm -hmm. it kind of ends on this giant cliffhanger that had gone unresolved. And then Showtime picked it up for uh, another. They did one more season a couple years ago. Was it good? I haven't watched it yet. Oh. I watched like a couple episodes of it as it was coming out, and then I just never finished it. Hmm. Okay. So That's we should watch Twin Peaks. There's also a that. Twin Peaks movie. By David Lynch? Yep. Really? Mm -hmm. Is it like before or after the it's, show? It's, it, it came out after the show, but it's set before the show. So it's like a Star Wars, the Clone Wars movie. <laughs> yeah. And then the Clone yeah. Wars show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but so what, going back to Wild at Heart, this was David Lynch's fourth film, I think. And then... It came out the same year as Twin Peaks. Okay, can you tell I love Twin Peaks? Yeah. <laughs> but but so this Wild at Heart was based on a book and I found out that the book has seven seven in the series. There's seven books in this series. Really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it was based off of a book. Mm -hmm. I didn't dive that much deeper into it. It was just when we were watching the credits, it said it was based on a book. And I was like, oh, let me like pull huh. up the Wikipedia article on this book really quick and then found out that there's seven books, including Wild at Heart, but there's seven hmm. books in the series, which is interesting. Yeah, so the whole movie is just Nicolas Cage and his girlfriends just kind of hanging out, and then behind the scenes there's people trying to kill him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the with people trying to kill him, it wasn't really like that. If Like, if you look at the synopsis on IMDb, it's like Sailor and Lula outrun the weirdos that her mom has sent to kill them but it's like i felt like that was a very small part of the movie mm -hmm. like they're I not agree. really like that much tension of them being like chased or like gone honestly after, you i know? think i think the and all right this is i mean it's not my movie you know whatever i'm just fucking spouting shit out but i think the movie would have been better without the mom you think so i but think i think if it was just at the beginning when he kills that guy that his mom hired to kill him like if he was just some random dude he went to prison and then they like he broke parole and they went off and then they meet willem dafoe just by chance i think that I mean that's I, I think that would be better writing but that's just me i don't know i feel like i feel like the mom thing just didn't click with me i feel like but I... The, the whole thing with mimicking wizard of oz i guess she was essential if you if since he was going that route it, but I also do like how at the beginning that like the mom did hire that guy to kill Nicolas Cage. That way he's like still sort of like a sympathetic character. And like the mom is doing all this behind the scenes stuff of where like she orchestrated the death of the father, which I guess wasn't really explained. But they were just like they did that. that. Yeah. And Nicolas Cage knew about it. So that's why she wanted him dead. Like I feel like it for me, I guess it worked. Yeah. But I just don't think that there was like enough of it in the middle part of the movie like it almost seemed like the car crash sequence was kind of just like shoehorned in there where they mm -hmm. were like hmm, what do we put in the middle right here it's kind of slow because they didn't really have anything like mm -hmm. nothing there wasn't any like tension nothing like going, on, going yeah. after them you know and like okay so what about how did <laughs> it was was it's incredibly coincidental that the guy hired willem dafoe to uh to take the hit out on nick cage and like they just show up in that town in texas like yeah what if they didn't drive through texas because <laughs> willem defoe's he he was living with the the i think the character's name was perdita the one chick that had the like uh, the contracts yeah yeah well the uh the the, the girl with the eyebrows that had yeah, the history with yeah. nick cage um the girl I, with the eyebrows she had some <laughs> long eyebrows yeah she did so like <laughs> I'm assuming that was where they lived that just 
Nicolas Cage happened to run into them mm-hmm. or in, in Lula. Like it was very coincidental for Willem Dafoe. <laughs> That's know? what I'm saying. That's why I think if it was like they just showed up and like Willem Dafoe was just like this, he saw Lula or whatever, however you pronounce it, Lula? Lula, yeah. Lula. Like, and he was just like this scumball who saw Lula and because Lula is so attractive, like he like got in. I could see messed it. With it. Messed with them. I could see it. I could see it working. Like maybe, maybe that his like half attempted rape scene would have had more impact if he was actually just going to take out Nicolas Cage's character to have his girl. That would make sense. Right? I, I mean, could I see know. it. I'm just, uh, I'm just yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff. Just throwing shit at the wall and see what sticks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do like his snakeskin. Yes. Jacket. I saved the quote that he says everything every time he puts it on. Um, it's a symbol of my individuality and my belief in personal freedom. So did you know that that's actually Nick Cage's uh his that's his snakeskin jacket that he owned. Like, really? It wasn't like a prop. It wasn't made for the character. Like Nicholas K. It was his that he brought to set. Like it was I his idea. It was pretty to badass. I, kinda, I was kind of about it. I was also and then about his quote it. about it. I'm like, that's cool. I'm yeah. gonna start using that. <laughs> I hope that was cool. And then he like beats up that guy at the thrash mm-hmm. club or whatever. That I was, was gonna cool. say. I was like, I was one of the first things I wrote down in my notes was oh. I was going to ask you if you like the metal soundtrack, but then as the movie went on, I was like, well, I guess do you like the metal song that played <laughs> yeah. eight times during the movie? It was the same metal song. There. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I will say the soundtrack overall, I really liked. Yeah. There were some good songs. Besides the overuse of that one song, mm-hmm. I would say so. Yeah. I wonder if that song was like super expensive and they just had to get their money worth yeah. <laughs> for getting the rights to that one. Um, there was a lot of sex in this movie. There was a lot of sex. And a lot of red color filters yeah that's the thing that uh david lynch does a lot too where like it will like the entire frame will be like oversaturated by one color mm-hmm. it, it, it's a david what lynch are, what, trope yeah what are some other tropes that you saw in this movie from uh, david lynch well i feel like another david lynch thing is that like there's there's always some like really bad adr like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there, there were a couple scenes with the mom that i was like that she was not like these lines were definitely recorded in a studio yeah. or there was the one scene of the lady singing and it was just like her lips did not match up with the song she mm-hmm. was singing or um when they were in new orleans did like remember the guy with the like really high-pitched voice yeah that's another thing he likes to do is he'll like play around with characters voices like that like in twin peaks um like how we've mentioned it was supernatural and there's a point where oh why can't i think of what it's called that he goes into the mystical realm or whatever and there's this one character that so he speaks completely in reverse let's uh, if if that makes sense like yeah all of his like like the words like it is he saying it like He's like spe- he's saying the word normally, but just reading the sentence backwards, or like the actual word is he saying backwards? So like, he, like if if the only way to understand what he's saying is if you reverse the sound. Basically, yeah. So he's like, when they were recording the audio for it, he was saying the lines backwards, and then when you're actually watching it, it they like reverse it so that it's you can kind of hear what he says. Let's see if I can find a clip of it. Um, interesting because i am not doing a good job of explaining it (laughs) i'll hold it into the mic so you can maybe hear it when you see me again it's gonna be me huh that's weird so yeah like what they did so it's like half backwards and half not no wait what oh so we read it Wait, so he how like the fuck did he do that? So when they were recording it, he, he like read it backwards, and then when they were editing it, they editing it, they just like reversed it so that it sounded like that's so weird. Yeah. That's so clever. <laughs> that's so, smart. That's what the like the high pitched guy, the high pitched speech made me how think of. How do you of. speak backwards? I feel like that's a hard thing to do. I don't know. Let's look at that line and try and think about. So you'd be like im im beat no t gum. Im is <laughs> yeah 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 and then they would just play it forward <laughs> you how do you do you you uh, you you 
I, I don't know. Yui, Yui. <laughs> I think you. <laughs> I think it would be way easier if you, you should, record the you whole should, line. Uh, you should play this back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Podcast is see how good it sounds. Ich bin alleine. Yes, this. Ah, wusch. Oh, von Malaria. Yeah. Did did we get it right? Did it sound good, guys? <laughs> uh, that's so, interesting. He's definitely a creative director. He's he's unique. Very, very unique. Definitely mm -hmm. stands out amongst other directors for sure. I agree. Um, I wanted to mention when we were talking about the music. So when the the mom's lover, the guy who I can't think of his name, but rest in peace, the guy from Alien that gets the chest burster is the mom's lover. I, I'm just going to look up his name so that we can be completely thorough here yeah. but so he as he's driving down to harry dean stanton rest in peace rest um in peace. he's dead he is dead i'm sad the so it shows him driving down during the day and he's listening to baby please don't go and then the next scene of him driving is at night and he's still listening to baby please don't go <laughs> yeah, i didn't catch on to that <laughs> yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. So I guess that they reused that too. Um, I t I feel like maybe back in the day it wouldn't have been such an egregious thing. Right before there was like home releases where you could just watch it mm -hmm. again, or I don't know. I don't even know how. Uh, well, I was gonna say I don't. I don't know how like prevalent licensed music was in movies but that's a dumb thing to say like th this was this isn't even that old like yeah. 1990 90s, come on yeah. <laughs> that was a dumb thing to say but uh so we kind of mentioned this while we were watching it but there's a scene where nick cage and laura dern are driving together and Laura Dern kind of like sits up and it kind of looks like there's a mic, like you can see the mic. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk about a little bit about how like in with the age that we live in with digital streaming and stuff, when there are mistakes like that, a lot of times now they'll go in and like just edit that out. Yeah. You know, like I get why they want to do it to make their thing like perfect, but I also don't like it. You know, yeah. I feel like it like gives some stuff. Like it's it like, gives a it's character. Like, it's you like know? Uh, if you remove the scene in Star Wars where the stormtrooper hits his head. Right. It's like that's such a beautiful. That's such a like iconic part of the movie. But like, so it, there's the the two most recent examples off the top of my head are like in Game of Thrones when there was like the Starbucks coffee or something that got they left in that. the scene. They got that got removed. And then there's a shot in one of the Mandalorians where there's like a guy wearing jeans in the background like somebody on set just like got in the background of a shot and then yeah. they just uploaded a new version onto hbo and disney plus that edits edited that out which i think is kind of lame also i want to go on record here and say everything past uh okay I, okay i'll say I, i'm not gonna say that <laughs> all right the first four seasons of game of thrones excellent tv oh. after that complete horrid just absolute garbage dump of fire except battle of the bastards was really really good everything else cinematography music acting set design costume design is excellent but the story is so bad that it just takes away all of that but house of the dragons all right so far there's three episodes in as at the time we're recording this um i'm not huge into game of thrones like you are but oh, i'm not anymore the last season was so bad that like it it's hard for me to watch the house of the dragon with like my roommates because they're really about it and i'm just sitting there like man i feel like this show has been ruined for me because of how badly it ended <laughs> <laughs> well the uh um benioff and weiss the guys they're they're not involved with house of the dragon Thank but God. they i will say our oh, talentless hacks. Yeah. <laughs> because, well, so one of them you know, worked they, they, on they, X-Men Origins Wolverine. They, they, yep. And then there was another movie that it's like a Netflix movie called Metal Lords. 
And I saw on the Tool subreddit, people were talking about like, oh, Tool gets mentioned in the Metal Lords movie. So I had mm-hmm. to watch it. Yeah, of <laughs> I had course. to watch it for the Tool. And oh my God, it was so fucking bad. And then- They're actually like the worst writers. Like, all right, it's past the thing, but I, I, it pisses me off so much that they had like this, in, like there's such good character work in Game of Thrones, like with Jamie, like becoming like this, Person who had like he fucking had incest with his fucking yeah, sister, yeah. and he's awful. And he gets and you a redemption them. arc, and he gets such a good redemption arc, and you love him. And then he goes back to Cersei, and you're like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> and then Arya killing fucking the White is it the White King? Is that what his name um, is? Whatever the leader. Of I the, honestly don't know. The leader of the fucking White Walkers. White Walkers. Um. And it's like, well, Jon Snow is fucking useless the entire show then. Cause like, <laughs> like I, I, the only reason he came back was because he was like the prophecy to like fucking help everybody. But he was just fucking, <laughs> I hate that show bro. <laughs> At, so I didn't even know that, uh, I think it's D.B. Weiss worked on Metal Lords. Yeah, he wrote it. And I didn't even know until the very end when the credits rolled, I was like, holy shit. That makes complete sense why that movie was so fucking mid. Uh, That's awesome. Mm, Let me see if I have any more notes on uh, uh, Wild at Heart. I would say if you're a David Lynch fan, definitely pick it up. It sucks that it's only available on DVD. That may change in the future. Yeah, I I hope this episode doesn't flop. Yeah. (laughs) Which I think it might, but because no one will be able to watch this movie. Um. Yeah, hopefully not. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe hopefully I'll I'll, I'll encourage our viewers to or listeners viewers. I always do that. It's technically listeners. Mm-hmm. But I'll encourage our listeners to expand their physical copy collection. You know, yeah. It's, it's actually good to own something tangible. You know, yeah. Buy this movie. Yeah, go buy this movie. It's not something that's. It's not a waste of money. I don't mm-hmm. think. So wait, why did they kill? the wife or the mom's lover. I didn't get that part. Like she was like, no, Santos, don't kill him. I guess just because Santos wanted her. Okay. I guess. I yeah. Don't know. I, that was something that I didn't understand. Yeah. This was a movie that I felt like I wish maybe having watched two times would have been good for. I agree. But also the two hour one time makes it kind of hard to go back so immediately to where like if I were to watch this again, it wouldn't be anytime soon. Mm-hmm. And by that time I would have forgotten all the like intricacies. Maybe not, but I feel like I probably would have forgotten a lot of intricacies to where like if I would like notice things, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, and then did you notice like the crystal ball? There were two scenes with like there was a crystal yeah. ball. That was also reused. Like it was the same really? shot, just with like that diff- something different in the crystal ball, but like the, the hand, hand going movement. over it was the exact same because you could tell, like you could see where the green screen, you know, mm-hmm. like by the fingers. And I noticed the exact same like pattern. Huh, interesting. I didn't catch on to that. Um, What would you rank this movie out of 10? I think like a seven out of 10. I'd give it. I think that's fair. Six or seven. Yeah. I really do think that Nicolas Cage and Willem Dafoe, or they, they definitely were the stars of it. I, I think, Laura I think Dern three, was also really good. Yeah, and uh, was that the, yeah, Laura, yeah. Mm-hmm. Him, those three and, yeah, just really those three. Willem Dafoe, Nicolas Cage, and then his girlfriend, Laura. Mm-hmm. Or whatever the actress's name is. I apologize for not knowing. She was a great actress. Lula's the character. Laura Dern is the actress. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was the... Wait, <laughs> Luna, Laura Dern. Lula. Lula is the character. Uh-huh. Okay, gotcha. They're very similar. Yeah. They sound like they, at least. Yeah, they are. Um, and then I was surprised that he... Well, okay. So how did he get out of jail the first time for killing somebody with his bare hands for he only was in jail for two years and then he goes to jail again Honestly, for attempted robbery and two people died during that and he still gets out of jail <laughs> i feel like well he te- all right the first one i feel like he probably had a shitty lawyer because i feel like if someone pulled a knife on you and you killed them i think you'd probably be within the realm of self-defense yeah mm-hmm 
The second one, he technically didn't kill anybody. Yeah, but he just robbed. They definitely would have tried to pin it. I on guess him, that's accessory you know? to murder, isn't it? And with his prior, yeah, he, he would have been. He would have not been yeah, going away for not, six no, years. He would have been gone a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end, with the the broken nose, his did nose not look good. Fat, yeah, <laughs> it looked like there was say, some clay on Nicholas his nose. Nicholas Cage does a good Elvis Presley impression. Yeah, both of the songs he sang were Elvis songs. Yeah, and I do fucking love Elvis. And me too. I'm a big uh, Elvis fan. Yeah, you can't hate on Elvis, dude. Uh-uh. He's he's just he's the king of rock, man. And and Nick Cage was a good singer. His his accent was better than it was in Ghost Rider. It like, was it was... So, you're right. It was way better. What the hell happened in Ghost Rider? <laughs> yeah, I know. Why yeah, didn't like, he... he should have been the same accent, right? Like he could have just done the same Southern accent. It was That's way better so in this weird. one. I didn't. I didn't think about that. It was way better in this one. And this one came out like what, like twelve years, fifteen, fifteen, something like that. Fifteen, sixteen. I think yeah. seventeen actually. Seventeen. Yeah. Still enough time. That's yeah. weird. He's a good singer. He's I think singer. I like Nicolas Cage. I, I, think, I am I a think, big Nicolas I Cage this, fan now. Watching, watching that movie has made me like him a lot more. And I want to watch more of his stuff because I think, I don't know. I feel like with, obviously there are your fucking S class actors who are like, oh yeah, they're like, you know, whatever. <laughs> S rank actor. Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio, S rank. Well, he is. You can't deny it. <laughs> no. Yeah, you can't deny it. <laughs> um. But I feel like there's something to be said about actors who, like, every single one of their movies is just fucking so different, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, Nicolas Cage always gives it his all, too. Yeah, he does. It's all you can ask for. So, um... Next time... So, yeah. We will be watching... National Treasure. Yes. National Treasure will be our next movie. And at when this movie, or when this episode also comes out... This weekend, we will be going to go see um, Don't Worry, Darling. So we'll be posting a bonus episode. And if if you're not, if you don't know, that's the trailer you've been seeing with Harry Styles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the Harry Styles movie that you keep seeing everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now I want to know when Clerks 3 comes out. Oh, Tuesday. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got to do Clerks 3 as well. All right, clearly you can tell when we've been recording this now, but yeah. I mean, if you if you're listening to this, the our Clerks 3 episode will already be out. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we hope it was good. Yeah. <laughs> I also yeah, we really hope it was good. <laughs> and we we also hope the audio doesn't get lost and we're not just talking about this and it's never going to come. <laughs> yeah, true cuz last time we went to the movie theaters we just lost all that audio. Two audios. Two audios. Yeah, we, we Cameron and I went for a $3 movie day. Saw 3000 Years of Longing and Bullet Train. Mhm. Both were mid. And we recorded two episodes, but they were each only like 10 minutes. There was and- so little to say about them. But anyways, I almost sneezed. <laughs> I, well, okay, I we'll see how these this next movies go that we see in the theaters. But I felt like seeing those, like not being able to actually take notes while we watched the movie. Mm-hmm. Like I almost felt like I did like didn't have as much to talk about. You know, that's true. We'll see how these next ones go, though. Yeah. Well, we hope you liked Wild at Heart if you were able to find it and watch it. Yeah, I'd recommend getting I bet it's not that much. I bet you could get it for like fucking lower than 20 bucks on Amazon. Mm-hmm. There's no way. And it's I David Lynch, know. you know. Yeah, we'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. $18, $18. guys. $18. Pull if, the trigger with this movie. free delivery with Prime, so it's basically nothing. I hope this just blows up the wild at heart. <laughs> yeah. The, the wild They're like, out. damn, we got to get this on streaming services. <laughs> we got to get this. The revival. Anyways, we, uh, as always, we always really appreciate you guys tuning in and listening to us talk about stuff that we're really passionate about. Um, yep. Watch National Treasure. That'll be our next episode. And yeah, we'll, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.